Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsessions Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dark down for a while 2023, you guys, and I'm winging it! Hi, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. That's the website, the Dork Forest, if you like a determiner. Dorkforest.com also works. JackieCation.com has all of my stand-up information. Like, it has videos, it has pictures, it has links to this podcast and to my other podcast with Lori Kilmartin. It has a merch store that has Dork Forest t-shirts. It has all of my stand-up merch and all of my CDs and DVDs. So, that's what you know about websites. There's an opportunity because uh, we're in the new year here that you can donate to the Dork Forest. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have uh, anything really set up, though I understand you can set up on PayPal a monthly if you wanted to. Uh, you could donate and uh, be of uh, to support the show. This is the 17th season, the 17th year I've been putting this stuff out. It's free, but if you have money and would like to throw me some money, boy, howdy. Uh, uh, there's a PayPal. The, and there is at my web, at my email address, actually, Jackie at JackieCation.com, which you can also email me and tell me how much you're enjoying the show. You can also do Venmo if you'd like, which is just Jackie Cation. No hyphen, all one word, picture of this this person, me, and then um, I think that's it. I think I have Zell, but it's too complicated. Other than that, let's do the credits. Patrick Brady, still in, fixing the audio all these years later. Give it up to Patrick Brady. That's what a lot of your donations support, by the way, because I like to uh, share the wealth. And then um, Bill Mose, he does the websites. And Mike Rickberg, wrote and sang that song composed and sang that song with his wife now sarah and uh at the end he sings uh the mexican hat dance which is always fun anyway i'm sure there's more to it there's a band camp that has a bunch it has like a a, a stand-up storytelling album that was never released it's uh there's also a a bunch of live episodes that many of them are free there were 200 episodes that were not pre-recorded, and I sort of culled through those, and I pulled like 17 of the best ones. There's an album collection of that, 17 Hours of Dork Forest. If you run through all of the episodes, go to bandcamp.com, Dork Forest, or Google those words, and you'll find it. Anyway, there's probably more. I can't remember any of it, but you're doing great. Feel free to enjoy the show. Oh my gosh, I'm in my garage again, and uh, Andy has replaced my X-Men poster with a painting that my father painted in the 90s. Uh, look what he did, it's the crick. Anyway, uh, it wasn't a creek, it's just a crick. Uh, today, here on the Dork Forest, uh, I met in Traverse City, uh, T-Barb, I am T-Barb on the Instagram, and T is in Tom, but not. And then Barb is in Barb, yes. And uh, and the brand is only in Detroit because you're a Detroit comic. Uh, very funny. Happy to have met you in Traverse City. And now we're going to dork out about documentaries. Welcome to the show. Yay! Thank you for <laughs> having me, and I love that introduction. <laughs> love it's it. a good one. It's yeah, it was, I just, and I was so happy to meet you. Listen, remind me to never sit next to you sometimes because we were like vibing out so much that we I didn't was get to. It. Yeah, we didn't get to. We didn't get to see the stand up as much as uh, I wanted to see, but because you know, uh, the only time I see stand up, I don't know if you're watching other people's specials, but I am sometimes racked with jealousy, and other times I see so much great stand up, I don't actually need to see more stand up. I'm good. <laughs> I, I I enjoy stand up, but I just I don't need to. I, I watched Otsko's thing on HBO Max the other night, but I didn't. I watched three quarters of it, and then I okay. read it off. I just walked into the into the ocean. I couldn't do it. Uh, it was actually really good. She's very funny. I love watching her live, but I don't. Uh, there's some reason just watching specials of stand up. It's not my jam. But other people, I'm psyched they have them because it means. Did it makes you watch me. Chris Rock's live? I didn't watch. I haven't watched any in quite some time so i'm sorry i'm snitching on myself i think 
I, I can't even recall the last like newer one that I've watched, but I do need to take a little more time to do that. And all over TikTok and, and Instagram reels, I'm seeing people's clips right and left. And I'm like, look how funny he is. She's great. Anyway, I mean, you know. like your clips, because your clips. And I guess when you're seeing clips of, of these people or your friends, it's kind of like, I've seen some of this. And then when you're performing it, a lot of times they perform it before the special where we know that. So we've heard, if you know that person, you may have heard some of that. I mean, I definitely let them play to make sure they get them a couple of dollars, but sometimes right. I don't have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And right, I'm, I'm working on my own thing and it's and it's all well and good. It's just, uh, so, but talk to me. Television, we all have time to watch some television. So uh, you have favorite documentaries. Pick one. You sent me a very long list. So uh, yeah, <sighs> just pick one you want to tell me about. Because get this, I've seen none of them. Oh, well, that's okay. I like one called the um, Sex, Bets, and Booze that um, Made America. Oh, what? So what, that's a newer platform? one that I watch. It's okay. on History Channel. Okay. And Do you then, have regular um, cable? Do you have regular cable? No, no, I have Hulu. Oh, it's on the Hulu. Hulu. Okay, I have Verizon, and the Hulu comes with the Verizon, so it's a two for one. That's it. And then okay. since everybody got kicked off of Netflix, like for sharing, mm -hmm. I no longer have Netflix. <laughs> so it's oh. obvious that I was sharing. I was oh, the I was the Sherry, and I lost. My Wait. Wait, I did not know that they had canceled that because uh, my nephew has not sent anything about it for he is the Sherry. Oh. <laughs> well, they're starting in different markets. Okay. So I think that I think they hit us or maybe they pick Apple picked us or maybe they right. just kick me off. Either way, right. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> you don't have Netflix anymore. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but booze, bets, and sex that made America? The sex bets and booze that made America. I believe I'm saying that correct. Um, right. it's on the History Channel, and it's it's like it really talks about the first brands of the United States. So some of the first nationwide brands were Jack Daniels, yeah, who um had a guy helping him, a black guy named Nearest Green, and that's where you get the Uncle Nearest whiskey from now. And they talk about how they pioneered filtration with charcoal um how they patented the square bottle and like the ups and downs that it took them to become a national brand um and yeah. Budweiser Anheuser I mean I'm wrong sorry Anheuser Busch okay um, which makes the Budweiser. first brand yeah. of beer yes um which makes Budweiser Anheuser uh had a company it wasn't doing well Adolphus Bush was his son-in-law and he took it over and what, well, he made him take it over. And he was the first one to start refrigerated cars. That was for beer and pasteurization was also brought here for beer. So it wasn't about your food. It just later oh. went to your food, but it was initially for beer. They're the first one to bottle a package oh. and send it across country. Um, before okay. then you would buy your beer from a local establishment because beer uh, spoils quickly. So I right. learned a lot about all that. Right, right. That's and and <laughs> tell me about T Barb is uh you're interested in branding a great deal, which is why I think you might have been sucked into the into the branding documentary. <laughs> so what, well, what what was the sex? Who branded sex? Well, the sex talked about condoms. So during um the early 1900s, condoms were illegal because of the temperance movement. Right. So the temperance movement made it where they didn't want anybody to have sex, talk about sex. So guess what people were using for condoms? Guess, Jackie. Uh, sheepskin uh, intestines, which was you how the close. condom. Pig intestines or um, or sausage casing. So, which didn't have I the don't... best smell. No. Oh, gross. Uh, they <laughs> could be treated because here's the thing. They used to be called, I happen to know about the history of condoms. I don't. Uh, I think I got it from a romance novel, Grain of Salt, everyone. <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt. It was not come from a documentary. Um, okay. <laughs> but they were called French letters, and they were invented first in France in the 1700s. And the reason I looked them up is because my sister has always said, 
to about my our parents there we have six kids that uh she's like you know condoms were invented in the 1700s i don't understand why <laughs> they didn't use condoms and then everyone says to my sister darla well then you wouldn't have been born and then my sister darla always says no i would have been born but i would have been born a rockefeller like i was supposed to have been born <laughs> and funny, um, funny. yes so but they were French and they were made out of intestines initially of different mm -hmm. animals, pigs and all these things. And then when plastics were invented in the in the 40s, they started making plastic condoms. So in the early 1900s, they would have been made out of intestines, but people were just sort of jerry rigging their own. Yeah, well, he was. So the guy who invented the actual uh, plastic condom, okay. he started off selling those. He was arrested several times with determined. So what happened was uh, the plastics for tires were starting to be made. Mm -hmm. He ordered a sample of that and then bought another type of factory and had a, like a secret basement room where they started to manufacture those types of condoms. So that was, was the sex. Uh, oh, that was the sex that. part of it. Yes. With him. Okay. Um, and, and gambling? The gambling, actually, interesting fact, a black lady by the name of Stephanie St. Clair is the reason people play the lotto today. She was a Harlem policy oh. queen who yeah. fought with the mob in New York. And what she was doing was the numbers game, which right. was for poor people. You know, they would pay for a penny and they had an odd of 600 to one to win or a thousand to one, whatever it was. And so what happened was Bugsy Siegel and some of the gangsters wanted to take it over. And mm -hmm. it was a big war, you know, in Harlem. Um, she was eventually arrested, but that's where the state lottery models is three digit, four digit. She started the state lottery. So Stephanie so, St. Clair. So that was Steph Stephanie St. Clair had a great numbers racket running mm -hmm. and the mob wanted to come in and take it and then take all that money from the pennies from all the poor people who lived or working class, right? It was all, cause that's, that's who does the lottery now. That's who I was just in Minnesota and they have, they don't have scratch tickets. They uh -huh. have pull tabs and they're all they are is scratch tickets, except for that you pull a piece of cardboard away oh. from the images instead of scratching uh, the, 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 the weird stuff off. Of they're the getting card. us ready to get rid of change. <laughs> Right. And when I lived in Minnesota, you would give them, you would go to a lady. It was always some weird old Lutheran white lady because it's Minnesota. And uh, and you'd give her five dollars and she'd give you she'd be like, what? What ones do you want me to blow on them for luck? And uh, and now they all come out of a machine. And so you don't get like old Lutheran lady uh, luck. Very Listen, sad. the other bets part was about Las Vegas. So that's how the mob stole Las Vegas. So the editor of the Hollywood Reporter was a big gambler. He was addicted okay. to gambling. Only place you really could gamble was Reno, but it was back alley, dusty, dirty. Okay. At the table one day with another mobster, and it'll come to me in a minute because it's one of the popular ones. Um, He's telling his vision of my, a luxurious it wasn't place. Meyer Lansky? Not Maya Lansky. Okay. Um, he was in the New York. Oh, I mean, I watched oh, so many another other. mob guy. Another mob guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the mob guy that founded Vegas. People are yelling at their, at yeah. their telephones. Well, they what he did was he found out that the guy had lost too many bags, and in the middle of building in Las Vegas, the Flamingo was the first casino ever because he wanted golf carts, and he was the one who came up with the psychology of making it where the gambler does not leave. This is how addicted he was. Right. So he's telling this to a guy at the table. Right. The mobster finds out he's in trouble. They send in a blind investor to offer him a million dollars. At that time, that's, you know, that shit, $100 million now. Right, right, me. right, right. So oh. boom. Next thing you know, he finds, they they make him give up 51%. Ah. And boot him out. Yeah. That's how, how the going. mob runs Las Vegas, yes. Okay, I once read a book called Havana Nocturne, which was about Meyer Lansky trying, he was one of the founders of Vegas too. And he wanted to create a Vegas-like situation in Havana, Cuba. But the year and a half that he chose was the year that uh, Fidel Castro came to power. And so mm. he lost all of his money. But because he's a dirtbag and a mobster, he made it back relatively quickly and hid it very quickly from the tax people, but pretended to die Poor and alone, a single tear. Uh, I don't care. 
Uh, anyway, my father, big gambler. <laughs> I, used to, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care because <laughs> my dad, a big gambler, not terrible at it, not good at it, not bad at it. We lived indoors, but I always wanted a bike. So not great at it, not terrible at it. <laughs> so just um, at it. Just at it. Oh my God, he's still at it. Uh, anybody wants to buy a painting from him, he'll be using it over at the Potawatomi in Milwaukee. So that one, are, are most documentaries that are on TV, are they, they're not Ken Burns length, right? They're not 19 hours. They're usually no, like an hour, no. right? They usually do series. So that one was a three-part series and each one kind of focused on a different area you know, of course, they had like the Budweiser and the, the whiskey because some of these things were going on consecutively. Um, and then the cigarettes were also on it. So they talk about um, American tobacco. Yeah. And how, I mean, it was just crazy how the how the cigarette, the um, burn sack machine, which was entered into an American innovation contest. And what they did was he won, but they didn't want to pay him. So they end up saying he lost, right? So the guy who's over cigarettes, different companies, he decides to buy that. And because cigarette used to be a hand rolling thing. That's how all cigarettes became the same. And then with filters, it talks about how they knew filters were no good. Actually, the filters could be worse than the tobacco itself. But it was a gimmick wow. to make people think um, that, they were that being the healthier. cigarette was more healthier. They put the menthol in it because people start getting cough and they called it smoker's cough and mm -hmm. the menthol masked that um and how the companies knew listen to this now this is probably the best interesting fact for them we can move on this was that <laughs> in order to so there were five top cigarette companies right uh dukes moves up to five but decides he wants to be one remember he has cigarette machine he drops his cigarettes half price to starve everyone out after a year, he brings them in and does not mind going for broke. After seeing who cracked first, he brings them all in, gives yeah. them a proposition to merge all as one with him being the top, or he's going to drop the price of his cigarettes another 15% tomorrow. Oh my God, that is literal. That was the wow. first monopoly ever formed in American history, which was. And is that Philip, Philip uh, Morris? Tobacco. Did, what did it no, end it was up called being? American Tobacco at that oh, time. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I wonder who bought that out from that guy. I hope he died of <laughs> cancer. Does that mean? Anyway. Well, he didn't even like cigarettes. He only liked cigars. Oh, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah, and the filters, of course, have plastic in them. And the menthol, my brother Scott, the last bastion of guys who smoke menthol cigarettes. <laughs> No, you should come to Detroit. He is definitely not. He has nope. some Newport brothers here. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> get get in. Get in the on Scott Detroit. Cation. We have some he has some Newport brothers. Exactly. Here, so right, New, Newports. That's what he smokes. And he also oh, oh, he will be right at home with all the gift bags he could have. Right. Paid. Oh my gosh. And but I think he also does the gum and the patches in an effort to get his shit together. And he cannot. He cannot quit. And uh, my dad on nicotine. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Scott, I don't know if you listen to the show. He didn't even call me. I was just in Minneapolis. I didn't call him either, but I, I initiated contact the last time I, uh, we, we talked. So I have four brothers. I'm not saying I have extra brothers that I don't have to talk to all of them, but I have extra brothers. I don't have to <laughs> talk to all of them. Uh, okay. So that one is on Hulu and it's called, uh, what's it called? The booze. The sex, bets, and booze. Yeah. That's right. That, that made America. Yeah. That made America. Yeah. And I think okay. they have different ones that made America. So. Okay. There was a series that I saw. I think it's on, sadly, Netflix. Uh, but it's uh, Inventions of the night of the 1900s. And it goes oh, 10 wow. years at a time. And I've only seen up to 1950. But it's kind of amazing because they kind of explain how wireless works and how radio works. Oh, wow. and how um yeah like and 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 a bunch of other like the weird i also watched a weird automat documentary which was about the automat which was only two stores in new york and now everybody thinks that the the 40s were full of places where you could buy a triangle sandwich inside a a, 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 a little <laughs> plastic door i mean you yeah. know it only takes one thing for people to just absorb I, it as you know <laughs> 
as a fact and they're like oh yeah. i bet you that was everywhere no yeah, it actually yeah. just the no, two stores in new york city yeah <laughs> oh, and that was it. yeah uh okay so pick another one what's a what's another good one i like that ancient you... apocalypse since you want to throw the netflix out there i watched this before i got kicked off <laughs> <laughs> ancient it's... apocalypse ancient apocalypse so this one um archaeologist it's a six-part series again and what the theory is is that there was intelligent civilization before the ice age and that what happened was that we had a cataclysmic type of explosion or comet fire that started earth all over and it's based on like all of these archaeological finds that he's found around the world including here so if you notice each civilization kind of worships a snake or something with snake he's seen that he he feels that was indicative of um fire raining from the sky and the way it would have looked because at that time, we really were um, astrological people where everybody looked at the stars. Now we have so many lights and modern day archaeologists don't want to acknowledge astronomy. And I don't mean just cancer, even though I believe that too. <laughs> Let me keep it real. I'm an Aries. Um, but <laughs> I'm talking about when it comes to... You guys, to... T-Barb's an Aries. Okay. Yeah, so... I'm an Aries. Thank you. <laughs> Aries season. Um what was your chi okay no because my i'm uh I'm, I'm cancer but i was born in the year of the snake i believe so uh I you know you know like, i think it might have been a dog or something right well because you get the chinese uh sometimes you'll get the chinese uh placemat and the chinese placemat will tell you the good things about yourself and the bad things about yourself from the year that you're born i swear to god look up your chinese year and then look what they have to say about you because it's always like you're generous and and you're really smart but you're also uh, short-tempered and nobody you don't <laughs> want to give people a ride or whatever and, uh, so. and selfish and a bastard and next. some sort of bastard <laughs> next. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, next and that person they end up they're short and they have to be able to reach tall things okay so ancient apocalypse wait is it based on the the fact that everybody has that all like all religions have that flood and fire yeah. Um. Well, what he goes by is different layers they found. So it's amazing how many underground type of layers that they are. And he wants to know what were these people going underground for? What was going on on the surface that made them almost like bunkers here? But some right. of them very sophisticated. They found some 40 floors deep. 26 floors deep with things like kitchen utensils you see it's like uh chimneys they have for sophisticated breathing systems he oh, also like bomb shelters yeah so but he almost he feels like you know and there's things that they won't let him investigate like a lot of different like all over ohio there are different um they're kind of covered with forests but like snake feel like different Cavern, features like and caverns things or... and statues God, I, they're like masses but okay. they're like if you look like almost like crop circles but um like snakes and different things throughout the world that he travels to to show yeah. you where he thinks that these things happen and you can read their language and how he feels they're not dating certain artifacts as far back as they should so he's found some artifacts that he feels are 50 and 60,000 years With old people. but that, that where people were involved we want to feel like we're we were the most advanced civilization what he's saying is there was an, a civilization that was just as advanced as us but they were wiped out based on some of the things that we're doing now which yeah, means history and they were itself. and they were snake people no, they okay, interpreted thanks. comments as snakes. Okay, okay. Oh, they interpreted like fire comments. raining from the sky. Yeah, the way as it snakes. would look. Yeah, for a second yeah. there, for a second there, T Barb, I had, I was, I was like, wait a minute, she's into the lizard people. What's happening? <laughs> and oh, you got. <laughs> i'm not i'm not judging my friend karen rontowski will like she will she will go with a bigfoot thing and will swear by it and i'm like i don't even know how to talk to you about it but good luck but uh but she's done the door for us many times of um okay of comments because what it is is like even where the uh, grand canyon is there are certain masses and large masses of land where they feel like a comet had to hit it based on the the way that it's carved out from the mountain. But he's just basically saying that um, 
he believes that something cataclysmic may happen if we continue to do what we're doing in the earth based on what happened to these other civilizations, like the Mayans and different things. They all, that happened because of the disrespect for the planet and all of the things that we were doing to change climates, et cetera. So. Right. There's been several comics who have done jokes about how the world um, is, everyone's like, we're killing the earth. We're killing the earth. And you're like, you're not going to kill the earth. The, the earth will kill us and then shake it off like a dog and, uh, and keep moving. with us with it. We'll be the yeah. fleas. It will be the fleas and they'll just, <laughs> and, the, and the earth will continue and the earth will be something else with other kinds of animals on it that aren't us. Cause I'm not, you know, cyborgs or well, they can't be cyborgs. No one to build them with, uh, except for the AIs, I guess the AIs can build the cyborgs. And uh, so what, yeah. So talk to me. Um, let's see. Yeah, do another one. Unless you got more about the the weird snake. No, I'm telling you, I think I did a very poor job. <laughs> Isn't it that I'm explaining how great. I <laughs> yes, I think I, I missed guys, the mark on that one. But hey. but, <laughs> but try it yourselves. Maybe this is something you would enjoy. It's called Ancient Apocalypse, and it's on Netflix. It's really good. It is. I swear, it's really good. Well, it was um, great. The next okay. one. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, it's not wacko. <laughs> he's like official. He's like okay. He's really good. Okay. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Noted. It made it to Netflix. A scientist. Okay. Right, it made it to Netflix. Okay, <laughs> right. Um, yeah. The next one, sixteen nineteen project, which is on Hulu. Right. Okay. Um, it is a Pulitzer Prize winner, mm -hmm. young lady. She is from Iowa, Waterloo, Iowa, and black lady, and she's talking about the history of America and right. pretty much how everything historical has been written to pretty much just eliminate African Americans and black people's. Um, role in creating freedom and role in creating America, which leads to systemic racism or prejudice and also PTSD from slavery. So she gives an example of like gynecology. And this is a series as well. I mean, it's a must watch, I think, for okay. all cultures and yeah. especially for white people who just feel like, oh, I don't understand because with uh, without us getting the history, like Common Core and different things, we tend to repeat that. So right. when people don't know what happened on Wall Street, they really think things are a fallacy or that people are complaining when this has really been, this is why police are shooting people because they don't know the history. And if we confront the harsh truths, then we'll probably be better for it. So like with gynecology. Yeah, uh, yeah. so you're talking about, like this is contributions of, of non-white male or women, mm -hmm. non-white women. Slavery. From black slavery, people, just yes. working black people who were inventors and were intellectuals mm -hmm. and were artists and who had who were geniuses, and their ideas were essentially co opted by the system and by white people and just patented and and then writ they were written out. Can I? Yeah. Well, yeah, yes and no. So, for okay. instance, like gynecology, you okay. have a doctor that's credited as the father of gynecology. But what he did was he um he used twenty five hundred African slaves, slicing them alive, going inside their bodies, taking their ovaries in order to learn how to give us a pap smear. So for every pap smear that you have, there are twenty five hundred women that were a lot of times cut alive. And what those physicians did at that time was made themselves feel that black people didn't feel pain in order to stomach what they were doing, which happens today in the medical world. Black women do not get the treatment that white women get. We don't get the pain pills. We're told there's nothing wrong with us. And this is systemic racism that's been ingrained in us from that time. So she gets a little deeper into it. And it, it kind of makes you think like, damn, you know, 2,500 women were sliced open for me to get a pap smear to and know if is, I have cancer. And this is 400 years before Mengele was doing it to the Jews in Auschwitz. So it's the same thing. It's the same story is like people who people, other people don't feel the same things you feel. You have pain. Mm -hmm. They can't possibly, they don't look right. They don't look like they have the same kind of, and the same with aspirations and all this, but literally killed. These women were just operated on. And a dissected. lot of them were killed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just in the middle, or, or even um, it discussed race. At one point in time in the world, you were whatever your father was. 
So if you think about it, they say white people, but white people really covers a lot. You have Irish, you have, you know what I mean? You have yeah. British, you have English, right? But he, I know here in right. this country, we just kind of pave it that way. So back in the day, um, if a British and an English person got together and the daddy was English, then the kids were English. Well, they changed that with slavery because um, the slave owners was having raping the women so much and the kids were coming out that if they would have been what the daddy was, then they would have been free and they right. couldn't allow their property to be free. So right. they then enslaved their own children by saying they were black. So it just talks about all of those things. Oh, wow. And is that like six episodes as well? It's six episodes. It is six episodes, but um, yep. it is, that, it is a good one. Well, right, because of the, the education, just to get the information out about, here's too much information for you. I'm, my, my, my racism is an onion that uh, every, you know, six months to three years, I'll find a new fucking layer. And I'm like, oh, you had this preconceived notion about <laughs> other people. And, um, you know, I saw Black Panther. I know that uh, Namor came from the Mayans and that there was, anyway, so uh, I digress to lighten the mood. But uh, but yeah. it's true. Oh, that no, there's something that was, I think that was because I was going to say that. If, if you're looking for something like just educational, if you're looking for something like, okay, I want to learn some historical and maybe that might singe me. But what I'm saying is I think it's, even if you just somebody watches 15 minutes or their kids do just to get an understanding, especially if you, because it is really hard to understand certain things when you don't Wait, experience have, it. That's why diversity is important. Yes. Cause then, cause then you have access to all the different kinds of humans and you yeah. realize that everybody just wants a cup of coffee and for everyone to just kind of get out of the way. If you could just everybody move. Everybody sits on the toilet and boo-boos. I mean, yeah. you know, if you think about it like that or not on the toilet, because some people, you know, anyway, I was going to say that, but <laughs> <Right>. I'm back. <laughs> whatever, whatever example you guys want to do, just think about it. And yeah, we all want to ride shotgun. It's fine. It's I yeah. like traffic too. And that's the next one too. You ever seen traffic? No. Wait, it's a now documentary about traffic? Is. Traffic is okay. So docu series, which I really been on docu series. I don't know. Maybe I like the continuous watching. Um, yeah. but she does. She goes everywhere, and she is a real white woman for real. You know, nosy. Okay. Why can't we do this? How many guns in the house? So she did one on ghost guns, which is that's kind of scary if you're not ready to be scared. Um, because you know that they can mail certain pieces of guns and it's not considered a gun and they put it together at home. Oh, right. And it's right. untraceable it kit. with yeah. no serial numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know that the United States of America is the only place with more guns than people? 440 million guns, 330 yeah. million people. Brian Regan does a joke about that. And Brian Regan is the nicest guy in the world. And so and his audience is usually leads it can, they can lean. Uh, super conservative and so he talks about and he the first time i heard him do it he was it was in florida and he was talking about how you know that there's um supposedly there are four guns for every person in the united states which makes me think that someone has a lot of guns because i don't have any guns and um <laughs> that was the first time he did it and the audience shut Looking down right. on him yeah uh, i got no guns it's i did a gun episode of the i'm North from North. detroit i have a couple guns <laughs> not guns, guns but i have a couple guns robert jenkins you know robert jenkins yeah i know robert yeah the yeah he's for he's robert detroit Jenkins. comic yeah he did an episode he's during from, he's from land i mean um that's Lance. right i think of him as a detroit comic but he is he's a michigan comic. that's an hour and, and a half don't let nobody from detroit <laughs> see you say that because detroit okay. people are very serious i do only in detroit trust me if you say that the city across the street is Detroit, they will argue down. So don't go with Lansing. <laughs> I love Lansing. Shout out to Lansing. Shout out to Lansing. Okay. And shout out to Robert Jenkins, who is uh, is great. He's a, a great comic and he's uh, adorable. And he, when I met him, he um, told me almost, we did a very weird gig in Indiana together with the dumbest club in the whole wide world. And uh, he offered to walk me back to my hotel room. He said, I have a conceal and carry uh, permit. So um, you'll want me to walk. I said, that actually doesn't help, Robert. I don't know you very well. And, uh, but he came on the dork forest during lockdown and <laughs> okay. showed me his gun collection. He did gun safety as his dorkdom. Wow. And 
There was nothing creepier than uh, a grown-up man in his basement with guns <laughs> on Zoom. <laughs> it's a great episode well, of the Dork Forest, you guys. Okay, is, and that's a lawyer. And so who's a lawyer, that. knows entirely how to do this legally, correctly, and also not take any shit. Robert Jenkins uh, does not have time for your for your nonsense, and good for him. So, uh, yeah, so... I did. I did know that. Uh, that so is traffic. Is it trafficking in like booze, sex, and bets? Kind of everything. No, it's okay. like um, modern day. So that's okay. more historical, like how we were founded as a nation on certain right. things. This is like what's happening now. Like they have the organ um, thing. So there's a lot of people overseas that are selling their kidneys. And um, things like that for eight thousand, ten thousand dollars. A lot of third world countries where people are selling organs. Um, it talks. It's really good. It talks about um, love scams. So that was a good one about the romance scams. <laughs> Getting the right. one lady had got out of two point four million, <laughs> fifty thousand. I mean, these yams is lonely. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm spending the money. So, and then one talks about regular scamming. Um, she has one about the cocaine queens where she goes over to Columbia and finds the women. Um, so she does a lot. And I, I really, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. um, Do you? I can't tell. Uh, yeah, no, that, <laughs> I'm so excited. That is exciting. But I like the idea that the, because you could do trafficking, you could talk about because you could do trafficking all of those things. It's not just uh, drugs and and uh, and women. Uh, so and children, she has I that suppose. too, yeah. but she yeah. does. Um, she had one about the um, the plastic surgery boom. How they're doing these strip mall plastic surgeries. Yeah. So she goes to one in Miami where like fourteen women over the course of three years have actually died, and you know talked to different employees who were like. So they were talking about the BBLs and like she sat outside the clinic. It was a line outside the door. You would have thought that Jackie was in town on the comedy tour, but they were in line to get a BBL. <laughs> they were in line to get what is a BBL? Oh, that is a a BBL is a Brazilian butt lift, which is where you see girls with skinny legs and a big booty, and okay. so that booty is big, and so they they suck the fat out of the thighs and the mid waist and put it in the booty. Um, but they're doing like out the door too many a day. Mall. Okay. Yes. So she was talking about that, and you know the you know how people are in the hotel room getting injections to oh, make their wow. especially a lot of um people who are transgender and trying to cross over but don't have oh, the yeah. money, and so she goes into it from several different standpoints. The video girl to someone who just wants to have that look but doesn't have the money or is ashamed like a couple okay. of them you know the doctor looks down on them but this is what they really want so um it was it was interesting as right. hell one lady right, made right. forty thousand in a day pumping some booties up i was like <laughs> where do i sign up it's like it's right so and what what kind of doctors are these is it just like a no normal, no doctor kind of- like a girl that's just doing it oh it's just it's just well a the, the strip mall is doctors but the booty pumping is people. Oh, just you just go to the mall. Hopefully, it's not a kiosk. Um, strip so, mall. Strip okay, mall. Strip not mall. even in that. <laughs> Straight up, fancy. I'm talking about subway down the street, and then here <laughs> <laughs> right there's an anchor. Yum yep, yum yep. donuts. Not and even Chick Fil A. Not even Chick Fil A. Yeah, not subway. even a chain. A subway. Yeah. Oh, uh, poor subway. Yeah. I hate subway. Uh, I once got I sick at subway. Eat Can't eat subway. I know that. Well, just and that's the the thing I heard about plastic surgery because I am not pointy, right? I have thought about it. I'm not above thinking about. I was like, can you just fix this? Do I have? Why do I have to do something? Why don't you just suck it all out of the places I don't want it to be, and then and then put me back together with the same the same rack? I like this rack, and uh, and I don't <laughs> mind. I don't mind the, you know, just sort of get rid of the middle bits. And, uh, and I don't know, I've got a little bit of this going on. And it turns out if once they do it and then they tighten all your skin up, when you eat the same, it gets, we- the fat comes back in weird pockets. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen that documentary? I've seen it a lot. 
Well, you know, <laughs> I saw that on Instagram. I was like, no, that was right. <laughs> they're like, don't do this. People like, don't okay. understand. I think I think that everybody's looking for a quick fix, even when it comes to dieting or taking this or taking that. So I don't think people understand that you can diet, but you have to keep up. You can get the surgery, but you have to keep up. It's yes. not like you can't keep eating the Cardi B offset meal at McDonald's <laughs> and then go over to Buddy's Pizza and then go to El Pollo Loco. I mean, you can't mm. do that just because you have this because it'll still come back and now it's going to come back weirder. It's going to look totally weird because, because of the stitches. Like yeah. the way they had to sew you up, it's going to come <laughs> you out. You say Frankenstein. Yeah, it's you look, look like a fat real. Frankenstein. Yeah, all kinds of weird. The real monster. And um, wait a minute. Let's uh let's take a quick break here and um and see if there's an ad. Do you guys think there'll be an ad? Let's find out. We're back. Was there an ad? Did you like it? Hi. I'm talking with T Barb, you guys. It's I am T Barb, I A M T B A R B on the Instagram. Only in Detroit is the brand. Uh, those videos are hilarious on Instagram, and Thank you. I don't know where I don't know where you're calling all this stuff from, like local news, I guess. <laughs> or no, local. sometimes I see it. Sometimes people send it to me. Oh, that's um, and then sometimes it's like other people posting, but um, no, yeah. the news gets it from me. <laughs> oh, the, there we go. So I. I uh, I did not mean to cast aspersions upon your your crazy video task because you can you're finding the craziest videos where you're like, what is happening? And so yeah, that's uh, I oh I can't even remember. Did you do the was it the one with the little kid dancing? The it was a baby dancing. No, not a baby. Mm-hmm. It was not okay. a baby. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You guys, I am uh I am T Barb. And check it out yourself and then email me, Jackie at Jackie Gation, and tell me to watch more of it. Okay. Now, do you want to pick another one? I love I um, love a do- I love a documentary myself. I love a documentary. Um, let me I'm trying to think about one that is about someone. I liked actually the um that Michael Jordan, um, The Last Dance. The last um, dance was it about? Yeah, and I'm not a big basketball, but it was kind of about uh the Chicago Bulls. And okay. just how determined Michael Jack, I mean Michael Jordan was. Sorry, Look, shout out to Michael. I mean, uh, rest in peace, Michael Jackson the King. I'm sorry, <laughs> so sorry. But Michael right. Jordan and not Michael how B. Determined he was. Not not Michael B. Jordan. No, not, not Michael. Not B. Killmonger. Jordan. No. Not, not Killmonger. Creed. No. Yeah. No. Not Creed. Not the sexiest man alive that just cussed the somebody out on the red carpet. Man. But that's another story. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> see that, and I'm disappointed to hear it. Uh, if it was rude, but if he was not, if he was just. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, Michael really B. Jordan, it. call me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just, just call me. Sure, call me. I'll take a call from yeah. Michael. He might be on I'm the short sure list. I'm pretty sure he's listening. He's listening. Yeah, he's always. Yeah, he might be on the short list of men that I would be allowed to have sex with uh, if they asked. Um, I don't know. You're, he might not like. They might like, eh, not. No, no, no. I don't no, think cause... he's gonna. I, I, I think he's safe. I think it's all gonna work out. <laughs> okay, We're okay, a, gonna work never out. gonna meet, and B, uh, I'm 57. So no, <laughs> I mean the Cougars are in full effect. Yeah, yeah, they, they are. Yeah, I'm not much. Of a well, we I'm gonna call you Auntie. That's what we um, call you, Auntie. I'm exactly. I'm a perfect and and I would. I'm an excellent Auntie. Actually, I have 15 nieces and nephews. Six great nieces. Wow. And nephews. Yep. Wow, like that's for real. That's the real yeah, deal, right there's there. Some, the, the jackass gene is in no danger of. uh of running out of juice uh because uh the generations that keep breeding what oh, so what's what this is about michael jackson playing basketball michael jordan Chicago. michael jordan i just did it michael yeah, jordan playing Dora, basketball. we don't know nothing exactly. about this <laughs> <laughs> but but it was what, interesting. i like it 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 spoke to kind of like the tenacity that he had of being the champion you know how strict he was about it, and of course, in today's popcorn society, I like to see somebody who actually went through a little, you know, real. You just see him, and and you kind of see him as this icon that played for the yeah. Chicago Bulls and have these gym shoes, but you don't really see how dedicated um, he was to the to the craft. So um, that was one that I like. I'm thinking of my uh, my short list. I think I sent you a couple. Oh. I love uh, documentaries about cults. I'm a big 
I'm oh, a big the- cult, and I love documentaries about Hitler as well. So um, <laughs> I'm a big. I've read Mean Call before. Oh, what a thing! But you know, it's different things. Sometimes I just want to understand um, okay. the psychology. So I just watched one recently about Waco. Um, oh, as wow. one of the biggest disasters. Um, this is about the biggest disasters in American history. Um, and Waco was one of the things they covered and how the guy who set up the raid set it up all the way wrong. You know, they had wrong information and how they end up losing all of those officers and agents because he had it set up for the ladder to come into the artillery um, room, but they were in there waiting. And as soon as they came up, they just start. And they had oh. enough weaponry to shoot for days and days. Oh. And just how everybody ended up killing themselves that was in there. And how was it meant to be like that? I think it was three to four survivors. Right. And um, how, the, you know, survivors were saying they didn't. But some of them killed themselves. Um, okay. I just told them to kill themselves anyway. So um, that was another one. The Unabomber. This is before right. we were desensitized to that kind of stuff. Right, Sandy right. Hook. Um, right. So those were talked about all of those things. I'm not a big downer. I'm really an upper, but I do like looking at things because I think that when we don't understand history, then yeah. we continuously, it's like we're, we're going to keep making these mistakes over and over to the point where I saw a t-shirt. I got a catalog from PBS two days ago. and There's a t-shirt, uh, that said, don't make me repeat myself in quotes. And it was signed history. And it I is. I kind of want it. <laughs> I kind of want the shirt, quite honestly. Uh, what's the S word? Oh, the S word is about socialism. So um, that's oh. what about. Oh, my God. Listen, I'm definitely adoring when it comes to all of this stuff. Um, socialism. And it talks about the difference between capitalism and socialism and, and how communism? we were no just socialism okay it talks about how we were um made to feel like the only thing that's right is capitalism when that really is what's disintegrating our economy and of course the top you know one or to three percent of people are controlling the narrative for everyone but if they make you believe in capitalism they'll continue to control the narrative right um, for everyone I read um, so a, it. Yeah. No, I, I, well, I just I read this book that was it did this. It was an explanation of how the the big Amer- the American dream is the big American lie is that you you know the reason that we tolerate all of the injustices and the lack of sharing that goes on uh, is because we all think that we're going to be super rich one day and we don't want to share. And so and they put it better because they were some sort of uh, academic, but that was the <laughs> gist of it. And uh, so, but yeah, so I, that sounds actually good. The S word, what was that on? Do you remember what? That one was on the History Channel as well. And that okay. one was just a standalone documentary. But um, it really was good because it just talked about how, for instance, we're kind of fighting against ourselves. So we don't fight for our own unions and unions are what protect us, you know, the everyday worker or how we don't, um, that we, yes, yes, yes. And shout out to the UAW. I used to be a member of UAW 6. I used to work for the state. I had a job. That's that's it. This is, this is Delta Airlines is trying to unionize and, uh, and Delta is fighting it by giving everybody pay raises, which I'm like, good. I don't mind that either, uh, but you should let them unionize and then it'll be fine. It won't be that big of a deal. It'll be fine. And, yeah. um, Amazon just went through the same thing. So the 1619, she actually has a little point about that. That's why I say it ain't all just down where she's kind of comparing Amazon to back in slave days. You know what I mean? They're making little wages while the company, and that's one thing about capitalism where I like the um, S word is that we don't understand it. It's not like these companies aren't making money. So right. they're making you think that they got to cut, 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 and they make more profits. How much profit is enough? Right. These are the people that, that are helping you make the profit. But we have been, you know, psychologically made to think dumb. Yep. We've, yep. we've been dummy down to believe anything. And it was just talked about how even in politics, most politicians don't have one-on-ones with their constituents, but they're with a company every day. 
There was yeah. an organization daily that gets to feed their message, but they don't even know what we want. Right, right. It's one of the great, The I this morning I went and I heard Karen Bass, who's our new uh, mayor of, of uh, Los Angeles. I heard her speak and she had come up, she had worked in the medical industry for however many years. And then she worked her way up. Like, I think she was in like the, some like County board or school board kind of, and now as mayor of Sa of Los Angeles, but she knew who to talk to because she had come up through all of these smaller politician mm. kind of things. So the first day Los Angeles has a, 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 a real houseless like unhoused homeless problem listen they got doors on the tents i every time i come out there i'm impressed with the level of ingenuity of these tents right and these are all people who work for a living they're not all people who work for a living but a lot of them have jobs and families and they the kids go to school and the parents go to work but they can't afford a place to live and so day one of her of her um tenure she's been i think mayor for 18 months whatever and um she is it 18 months maybe not even but whatever it is it's great because the first thing she did was she bypassed one of the committees i don't even know which one to go to another committee that was an operations committee and she was like i'm just gonna need motels and we just got out of a lockdown there's empty motels all over this city and she's moved it's working like she's moved people out of out of, and it's going to take a while because we have we have probably 25 percent of the homeless population in the country lives in los angeles i can't listen i don't know why i mean i don't want to say i don't know why because of lack of resources but it's yeah. just it is abundant as you are riding it is just block after block especially downtown yeah. And we stayed at the, uh, what was it, the Omni? It was one of those hotels right off the freeway. And right there was cool, but you, a couple blocks over, it was like, what the hell? And it's a little, and it's scary if, how, it's scary, I don't even live there. So it's scary for me to walk through it. And I don't even live there. Imagine living there. And so it's, it just, it's, it's, it is the, it's her number one priority. Right. And she found out today that or she told me today that she, they, she found out when she took the job that there are 7000 city jobs that are unfulfilled. Wow. She's like, there's 7000 people who could have jobs. Yeah. And good jobs, city jobs with pensions. And so she has been working to try to streamline the hiring, working with the union and working with HR to try to uh, fulfill those positions and trying to do it from some of the people who are homeless uh, or Ooh. unhoused or whatever the correct term is, but uh, people who need jobs essentially and uh, good jobs, which would enable them to then uh, get apartments. Pay and take care of it because the average person, um, most people need two jobs. A yeah. lot of people need a job and a half, even if that's Uber and you go to work all day, even if that's DoorDash, you go to work all day, even if that's people take surveys or influencers who work that's still considered two jobs so yeah. most people in america if that's what they were saying it's sad that most people here can't afford to just work one job and yeah. have a house and be able to pay their utilities but the utility companies are going up even though they're making profit so if you're profitable why should you continuously go up 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 and your profits are going up mm -hmm. it's not even like i mean and by a great, uh, great, great percentage markets. And they what they'll do is close things in your neighborhood that bring your neighborhood down that they didn't have to close. Right. You're profitable, but maybe not as profitable. So they just talk about those things. That's even like that's interesting. We're so because, cheap yeah. over here with the 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 um computer chips. Why are they being made overseas when when they could be made here? Because it's cheaper. Now right. we don't even have control of those things, which leads to security. So they go into those things. Right, right. Yeah, the local the local production stuff is is fascinating too. Yeah. Well, we digressed very deep into that awesome. See, that's the thing about documentaries. They can be about anything. And they are, quite honestly. I mean, 
the last week's episode was i was about potato chips or two weeks ago and uh he was like there's a lot of great literature a lot of great nonfiction books about potato chips <laughs> canadian <laughs> snacks uh what potato are the chips books? were invented by a black man what andrew crumb it, there we crumb c-r-u-m-b yeah c-r-u-m uh, Oh, okay. I wanted there to be a B just because of crumbs, just because of the shake at the bottom of the potato chip bag. Um, are you looking it up? You making yeah, sure? No, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Yep. It's um, his original name was George Speck, later known as George Crumb. I have to say that all black history that I know comes from hip hop. And uh, it was uh, KRS one. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're here. That's why why yeah. T Barb is here to help and uh, and to point some things out, which is uh, necessary because uh, everybody everybody did everything. White guys don't get to have all the credit, even though you we were raised just like the rest of us to believe that you yeah. get all the credit. Just uh, be willing. How about the Four Horsemen or the Alone series? Oh, um, now the Four Hor Oh, the Alone. Let's go to. Because the, the Four Horsemen is back in my conspiracy bag. I don't think everybody's <laughs> ready for that. I'm, I'm back in the bag, Jackie. Okay. I'm talking about the Chinese dynasty that reigned for 500 years. And I don't <laughs> think these people want to hear. But it, but it is a good, if you want to hear about um, different dynasties and how most dynasties um, or like uh, the, the Chinese dynasty or the Roman Empire last about 500 years, most of them reign. So they kind of go into the American time span and things like that. So that's a good one. And okay. Alone series. Now, if you ain't never watched Alone, Alone is about being alone. <laughs> it's almost it's... a reality documentary, right? And the reason I put it in a documentary category, because some people say reality, okay. is that I have learned how to build a cabin with logs. Okay? With... I'm telling you, I'm ready. for You, the, you could do it. Okay. And so what I learned is that I could get some all <laughs> I could take mud and I could compound rocks. So what happens is <laughs> what is alone? <laughs> what channel is alone on? What streaming service? Alone is on Netflix. Once again, this is before I got kicked off. Remember, I'm back. <laughs> I think I found out why. I found out why. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's on Hulu too, just different seasons. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> different seasons. Okay. Yes. Alone is where they take a group of people. I think it's like 10 people. They drop them off in different areas of a remote location. Alone? Each to themselves? Or in yes. twos? Okay. In two. Okay. But they, oh, no, no, I'm wrong. That's Naked and Afraid. Alone is alone. <laughs> naked okay. and Afraid is another one where they get to be in twos, but they naked on that one. <laughs> they get dropped off in a remote location with no clothes on. <laughs> they get one <laughs> <laughs> and they're dropped <laughs> off with nothing except for a film crew who could hand them a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who can't talk uh, to them for right twenty eight days? Oh my god! And then they gotta make clothes, make food, everything. They only extract them if it's an emergency. But alone is they alone, but they do get clothes. <laughs> but <Okay>. they <laughs> and a but film crew who also can't talk to them. No, no, no. They're alone, literally. Like they have a camera that they um have. Oh, that they um, have to set have up to take with them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We only see what they turn on the camera to show us. They do have an emergency phone, but they are literally alone. And a lot of times they like to send them people up the camera. Shout out to them ketchup <laughs> chips because they up there in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Not even a bag of all dressed anywhere to be found, Canadians. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nowhere. They eating raw fish with no salt. They just eating <laughs> everything. I mean, well, they cooking it, but and I've seen some tremendous things. I've seen some people make some rock huts. So I do know that if it go down like that, yep, like the ancient apocalypse, I'm going to yep. make my hut out of rock. I'm not going to use wood because rock is more sustainable. I think we learned that from the three little pigs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you don't want a big twigs. And then the big bad wolf comes. Um, so yeah, I, of course... Uh, <laughs> I, I used to do this bit about time travel, about how we were when if if and when we learn how to do time travel, it's going to be the way we extinct ourselves, because people are just going to line up and go, I wonder what real pirates were like, and then they're just going to be killed. I wonder, you know, mm -hmm. 
uh, and me, I've always wanted to go back in time and see old growth forests in Wisconsin and Michigan. Okay. I mean, the UP is gorgeous. Have you been to the UP? Um, I have been to the UP. During the summer? Because that's times. when you want to go. I've done Silver Lake sand dunes and the and the beer sand dunes. Um, I haven't been up, 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 up. But I've well, if you go if, you, if you go up, up, and a little bit west, uh, let me tell you something. There's, I don't think those are old growth, but they should. They're almost old. They're the most beautiful forest of I think I've, and I've seen some really good looking for. I mean, there's really there's an amazing national forest in Arkansas. Anyway, I would like to go back in time and see old growth forests, but I don't know how to camp. So essentially, I would go back in time and die of exposure because Absolutely. I would yellow yeah. fever. Yeah, I immediately <laughs> I'd be like, where's the phone? How do I call somebody and have them pick me up? Because I can't do this anyway. So alone. And did you ever see a Canadian? It's a Canadian reality show with one guy called Survivor. He um, he, sh he schlepped his own cameras around, too. But he put himself alone into different weird situations. A friend of mine um, who came here when she was a little girl uh, from Mexico, well, a teenager. And um, she was watching, I was watching one with her, my friend Anna. And she goes, why is he eating scorpions? All of those cactus are edible. What is he doing? What? Because sc scorpions are more uh, compelling narrative. And they have, uh, yeah. And then they have um, poison in them too. Right. So it's, it's better TV if you eat scorpions than if you just make a salad out of that, uh, that, that really flat uh, cactus that's, delicious let me ask you this i wonder what his life insurance covered that because that might be considered <laughs> it really really is he I'm he was also curious. a folk musician and his it stopped because his wife was literally like you come home dehydrated sunburned malnourished this is not worth whatever hgtv or the food network is paying you this is ridiculous so that's why he stopped doing it um, yeah, I'm not going that far. I just feel like I would be well equipped. I do. And I oh, do if it know came edible down flowers to it. now. Yes, I got to be ready. <laughs> yeah. You know that there is a, a, a very big uh, society of mushroom people, uh, edible I mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Oh, they're not the, the best. kind to get high on. Me neither. But I just had lion's mane yesterday. I'm addicted. I'm a vegan. So I'm definitely thinking, so I'm addicted oh. to lion's mane. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I bought a couple pounds on sale. I actually got two pounds. And um, I made some what steaks. You, you made some mushroom steaks, steaks out of, okay. And how do you, how do you prepare? I made with some shrimp. So for my, for my lion's mane, for the steak, what I did is because I have one big piece, I cut it in half. Um, of course, you know, you, you rinse it, but you can't do too much because you can't absorb too much. But yeah. I, I use a coriander steak mix with pink sea salt, um, the coriander, the peppercorns, a little bit of cumin. Of course, got to have yeah. a cumin. Let coriander that sit cumin. for a minute. The, um, the onion, the garlic, little bit of ginger, a little bit of paste, ginger paste okay. with some vegan garlic butter that I had. I seared it on both sides, high heat, took okay. it out, took the pan down, and then you have to uh, put something on it to smash it okay. on both ends. Oh, like and a brick. Pipe, yeah. yeah, like a brick. And then it just pulls apart. It looks very steaky. And sometimes I'll use um, some vegan Worcestershire sauce as well mm. to give it that brownness and that ajou what, kind of flavor. What does Worcestershire sauce have in it that makes it not vegan? Um, 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 sardine paste oh it's got some sort of fish thing do you know yeah. that uh there's an episode of the dork forest with tig nataro where she talks about how veganism saved her life because oh. she had some health issues i have uh, to listen yeah uh t-bar uh, i have to tell you something it's been an hour you're oh, doing wow, uh okay. you've done vital so fast that's the thing about the dork forest you're talking about something you love and then it's over but everyone rangers of the dork forest you should follow t-barb on the uh instagram at i am t-barb it's i a m t b a r b and uh the brand is only in detroit and it's about uh it's about detroit you guys and uh tbarbisfunny.com is her website and she's a great comic you should go see her do stand up um and thank you so much for being on the show thank you so much for having me and check in when you're watching and learning think about me
Exactly. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?